I'm not even sure where to begin. What do you want from him? An apology would be a start. I want to forgive him. I'd like to think he's changed. He's all I have left now. Did you ever apologize to Demos? It is difficult to seek forgiveness when you feel unworthy. Now how to get across? <laughs> My sigil arrow should be able to carry the fire across the river to reach the bramble. Glad you have a spouse to remember. Vicarmer Petrias Garbison. Riggy Petai Rot. All my former spouse taught me was that there's no limit to the depth to which a soul can sink into darkness. Tricked me into marriage to spare my home and took my home just the same. Scattered my people to the wind. Maybe it's time somebody drew the line. Maybe it's time someone makes Groa's prophecy come true. I will not wish for war, Freya. War is a terrible thing, Kratos. But some things are even worse. You know, if Atreus rushes to Ragnarok, you may not be able to stop him. I will. And if you fail? I have prepared him to survive without me, if he must. Oh. Watch for the plants. They like me, but strangers not so much. I see that. You won't be able to damage it without destroying the mother. It's a large bulbous So what's next for you, if not preparing for war? I do not know, but I will take no chances with Atreus. Well, you may want to think fast, unless you want someone to make that choice for you. Ready? As I ever will be. It really is you. 
You returned to us at last. Yes. Uh, let's celebrate. You reclaim the throne, we'll rebuild, me and you against the world. Huh? Just like the old days. I'm... not staying. I don't understand. You're here. Maybe together we can take back what's ours. I only just got back what's mine. I still have work to do. You've seen what's left of the realm, right? Do we really mean that little to you? You question my loyalty? Vanaheim turned its back on me. Oh, you still can't let go of that old fight. It was my duty to save as many of our people as possible. My responsibility. One you didn't take seriously then, and from the looks of it, one you don't now. You think this is a game to me? Yeah. <sighs> we lost everything to that maniac you called husband. The man's family set me on fire. How did you expect me to react? Like my brother. Like the boy that used to have my back no matter what. And who I always supported no matter how selfish his choices. I expected you to come and find me. That no matter how hurt or angry, you wouldn't abandon me. Freya, please. I thought you were dead. Yeah. I've had to live lifetimes. But those last awful words I said to you. Have any idea what that's like? Knowing that your own selfishness hurt the person that you cared about the most. Abandon you. Oh, Freya. I mourned you. Oh, I missed you so much. But I won't bind myself to another realm when I finally have my freedom. I'll send help, though. And I will come back. I promise. This hasn't been your home for a long time, has it? What you gotta do. All right, all right, that's enough. Ain't y'all got nothing better to do than gawking at family sorting squabbles? Come on, you two. Not you. Got a few things to square with y'all. First is you collecting your spare heads. Second is that sigil magic I smell on your boat. Reckon that's an idea I'll steal. How's about I set you up with some sonic mojo? Call it a trade. Very well. Third of all, if and you ain't staying here, Bears mentioning that Sindri and I find ourselves running a flop house for unemployed gods. If you're done freezing your backside off in Midgard, maybe come back with Beardo there. Check up on your old pal Tyr. That's kind of you, Brock. I may do just that. Well, all right then. I'll meet y'all back at the house. Lesson you want me to fix anything up first. Well, Brock. 
Care to meet our new allies? Or shall we depart? Oh, excuse me, can you stop and drop a lady out, please? Keep her sharp and she'll keep you alive. You make up your mind. Tell me about the camp, John. Lord Freyer found her half dead in the jungle. She probably escaped the blows of their breathing far north of here. But he never gave up. She healed and hasn't left us since. She's a sweet girl. She's pure. About time I had something to do. Come back if you need more crap. I remember where to look for a gateway. Follow me. Well, you two seem to be getting on since completing your mission. Yet I hope this alliance has some staying power after all. It seems to me we share a common enemy. Kratos, you may not accept that Ragnarok is inevitable, but you're smart enough to know Odin is a threat. Whatever comes next, our best chance of surviving it is to work together. Do you agree? I do. Then as to Brock's offer, you can imagine staying under the same roof as a couple former enemies? No further temptations towards terrible vengeance? Not again. Either of you. You have my word. This lock is different.
different from others you might know. You'll need an enchantment on your chisel to use it. Bruna. Go ahead, carve the letter. Suna. It's an incantation. A Suna. The elves in Freyr's camp mentioned a gate like this in Alfheim. They talked on about some sacred light elf sanctum out past the barrens. A trip to Alfheim? Well, we can decide at the gateway. This boat will get us there if we can clear those vines. Remember what to do? There's a fallen log in the river. It has something on it I don't recognize. We're clear. So it's true. Tears really alive? Aye. Not exactly ship shape. He sleeps in a broom closet now. But he's adjusting. How did you find him? Largely, that's down to Atreus having figured out how to access the prophecies giants reserved for their own kind. We only learned of it ourselves after Thor and Odin came calling. To your home? Is it still standing? Barely. But all the violence was seemingly just a distraction to let Odin have a private word with Atreus. Odin was alone with your son? Did he tell you what they spoke of? Yes. He said that Odin invited him to Asgard to help him find his answers. The answers he's rushing into fate in search of. That's troubling. Well, if you're ready to talk to him, the Mystic Gateway is ahead. If not, I have some unfinished business up this river I could use your help with. Or we can follow up on that elven sanctum out in Alfheim's desert. Hmm. If you want to continue exploring, we'll need to remove that log in the river. Explore the river now, and hopefully write some more wrongs. What is your unfinished business? I left something behind, near the falls. Your wedding site? Now why do you want to be going back there? To be free of the bonds of my marriage. And to Asgard. I think you severed that a long time ago. Not completely. Not enough. Guide us. My people settled this river many ages ago. Thousands traveled it on pilgrimage to the Shrine of Worship. But then the Aesir came. This is all that's left. Astrid's garden. The wilds reclaimed it. It was beautiful once. Hmm. Said. The ace here burned him. Yes. We weren't yet at war, but relations with the Vanir and Aesir had been hostile for ages. And we'll just stop there for now.
Ah, that's it. What's it say, brother? Uh, uh, hey there. If you got an ear, his crest. I got a mouth. It's mine. Despite his actions at Midgard, Atreus does still care for you. I know. I raised a son, too. It may be hard to believe, but he was quite similar to Atreus at this age. He adored his father, always wanted to do right by him, and was constantly frustrated that no matter what he did, he never could seem to get his approval. He confided in me a lot, sought the comfort his father withheld. I wonder if your son could benefit from that, too. He has befriended the other dwarf. The Blue One's brother. Oh. Well, if Sindri has that covered, I suppose there's no need for me in his life anymore, is there? That is not what I meant. That was sarcasm. Well, Freyr got it into his head that he could improve relations by sharing our magic with them. Vanir techniques for bountiful harvests, enough to feed their whole population. Getting set on fire was the thanks he got. That's true. The Aesir were too undisciplined and impatient for the subtlety of Vanir spellcraft. So when things went wrong, they blamed their teacher. So Freyr was a guest when Odin burned him? Not exactly. Odin didn't mind locking Freyr up. He saw the potential of the magic and wanted to know more than how to improve crop yield. Wait, let us look this way. Much of the sand has been cleared away, but another storm rages beyond that pass, which must mean... Another half Gufa. I remember when Freyr and I traveled to this realm as children. The desert was healthy and full of life back then. I can't help but fear that era has ended for good and our efforts here are futile. It's a fair concern. Healing this land will take more than a pair of singing half -tufa. But I have to believe in the long run, we're doing right by Alfheim. Well, best we start looking for a way under... Keep a lookout for a cave! our work here in the desert. I wonder if he knows how poorly this realm has fared in his absence. Aye. Hearing the Song of the Sands again is a rare privilege, even if it's only a solo act. Or a duet, once this Hofgufa is free. This architecture... It is not of the Dark Elves. An abandoned ancient settlement, by the looks of it. Built long before the Light Wells creation. More hive matter as well. I'd say we're on the right track, then.
kind of hive material is sensitive to smell? How odd. When I last came here with you in Atreus, I assumed the absence of all high flight was an aberration. I didn't realize it was covered by <laughs> Aye. And as far as the Dark Elves are concerned, it's that light column in the center of the temple that's the aberration. Just look at how old some of these surfaces are. Far older than the light well, or even our trapped Afghifer, for that matter. That's quite the empathetic perspective, Mimir. Well, dangle from a burly god's backside for a few winters, and you'll find yourself looking for all sorts of new perspectives. More hives, but denser. Well, there you go. Underneath the barrens, do they? Territory changes hands often in Nalfheim. Or so it appears. Big VR did mention that these ruins have historical significance for the Light Elves. I assume they're only here to keep intruders out. Well, at least they tried. Good eye. Let's continue, <laughs> shall we? Yo! Yo! 
I hope freeing these half goofas will allow them to breed again. It was a dazzling display once. The skies of Alfheim filled with their song. I imagine it's the lack of fresh light that's caused this pair to grow abnormally large. No use in having babies if there's nothing for them to feed on. Trying to protect their children from a harsh world. I can relate. I wonder if these two comprehend the choice they face once free. What choice do you speak of? The life cycle of the Hakuza. In order to breed, they must pass on their life to their children. And without light, they will die. I suppose that's all any of us can hope for in the end. That our death has purpose. That we can live on through our children. Well, given another chance, I know what choice I would take. Go! Oh! Back to the surface, then. Used in many of Freyr's blessings. I imagine. Smith, whose king commanded him to construct a box that could contain all the evils of the world. But no metal could hold such a power. So the blacksmith used the flame Kratos, of... 
Is this a story meant to ease my grief? Perhaps it is just a story. A way to pass the time. I appreciate the sentiment, but... Well, your stories... What about my stories? I wouldn't exactly call them a comfort. There. Mamir is the better storyteller. Now, don't sell yourself short, brother. You've come a long way from the days of laconic fables. It's okay. Finish your story. The blacksmith's daughter was the key to unlocking the box. He died trying to protect her from those who would open it. Well, at least it's a relatable story. Years we've overstayed our welcome in our time. Yes, again. <laughs> Son's safety. Even these creatures know. There is little choice for a parent. You are not alone. <sighs> I'm not, am I? And now neither are they. Thank you, Kratos. This land sings once more. We've done good here. No rush to leave yet, is there? Who knows what kind of adventures ah! are in a freshly lit barrens? A light elf statue in the desert. Odd. On top of ancient elven ruins? I'd have to agree. Amir, what did you mean when you said Frey was not exactly a guest of the Aesir? I meant by the time they burned it, he'd been a hold that thought. It's about to get by. Whoa! 
I would have beaten you. What? Earlier. If Atreus hadn't been there. Mm. Perhaps. We could go again. Find out for certain. I would rather not. I'll bet you. said Frey was not exactly a guest of the Aesir. I meant by the time they burned it, he'd been a prisoner for some time. It was a mob of lesser Aesir, bitter and short-sighted. He tied him up and lit him aflame. Punishment for the sabotage they imagined him guilty of. Obviously, he survived. In fact, he used the opportunity to escape. <laughs> but such an affront made war inevitable. Freyr certainly wasn't the same after that, at least for a while. His carefree ways were replaced with nightmares, <laughs> paranoia, and lashing out. Set that aside for now. Come. <laughs> of a locked door. It could be anything. Monsters, treasure. Knowing our luck, it'll be a bit of both. It haunted him for a long time. It doesn't excuse what he said at my wedding, but I do understand where his anger came from. Freya, there's something I've always wanted to ask. What was it Grimthur whispered to you? Who? Grimthur, the son of Thormur, the stonemason, who disguised himself and built Asgard's wall. No more for now. Focus. A statue of my brother. 
How quaint. <laughs> That's odd. The runes are dark. What purpose does all this serve, other than a testament to my brother's vanity? Difficult to say without an inscription. But it looks like the elves built this place together. Light and dark. <laughs> which means this would have been their first act of cooperation in generations. A far cry from lasting peace. But perhaps it served as a monument. One that symbolizes the potential for peace. This statue may have survived Freya's absence, but the truth clearly did not. Monuments are useless to those who ignore their message. He didn't create a truth through diplomacy alone. His godhood, his very presence is what healed this land and allowed peace to take root. But once he left, he had to have known what would happen. Well, he had good reason to leave. Some jackass convinced his sister to marry a madman. You said monuments are useless. Why restore this one? It was hidden for some time. Perhaps now it can serve as a reminder. Aye. Nothing reminds people of their history like chiseled, well-lit marble. You're right. Normally we'd have to provide our own. Perhaps slotting a crystal on the opposite side could shed some light on this mystery. Like we can read the inscription now as well. The light from the crystals. It is in the sand now. Would you look at that? Freyr's gift endures after all. Or I say his presence. You are not funny. Even when Freya was actually here, the peace was fragile. Surely a bit of extra light in the desert isn't enough to make it last. Before I met Faye, I could not imagine a life of peace. After her death, in our travels to Jotunheim, I found peace on my own. It remains my responsibility to make it last. Perhaps the elves will find peace again one day, even without Freya's guidance. His presence continues to guide them, whether they realize it or not.
Well, lady, I was curious about some of the flora we've encountered on our travels. And you will remain curious. It's not my job to teach you everything, Mamir. Look, I was just asking. And you have been told. Well, you can say that again. remember anything about what Queen Two of a stonemason's son said to you after building Asgard's wall? Or the massive door we found earlier? That door required two keys. Aye, so it did. Let's keep looking then. remember anything about what Dream Through of a Stonemason's son said to you after building Asgard's wall. Oh, yes. One of the many occasions Odin saw fit to involve me in a wager without my consent. I wish I could say that was the worst of his husbandly habits. What wager? I've told this story, brother. And now she may tell her own. There isn't that much to tell. I knew nothing of it at first, surely because Odin didn't expect to lose the bet. A mysterious mason had to build the entire wall in three ah! turns of the season. Two! It was two! And if he was late, he'd be owed nothing. But if he succeeded, he was promised an audience with the Queen. Or so I learned one day when Odin burst into our bedchambers, raging and half drunk before noon, telling me to get dressed and go see what the mason wants. So, off I went. Not knowing what had truly been promised or expected. Dagger stashed in my robe for emergency. Enough talk for now. Be ready. Something is coming, and it's not happy. Go! 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 Go!
something is coming, and it's not happy. Getting back to your story, Freya. You were forced to grant an audience after the building of Asgard's wall, yeah? That's right. And this mason, this giant in disguise... His name was Hrimthur! He just smiled to see me. And as you said, he whispered in my ear. He said the Aesir had killed his father, and he needed to know that one day they'd burn for it. I pointed out I was Aesir now too, technically. He gave me a look, as if he somehow knew better, and continued. He said he'd built in a structural flaw behind the Asgard Realm Tower. I knew it! How do we make use of it? We don't. He said Surtur would know what to do. And if Surtur...